Hello, hi, uh, my name is Suzuki, and uh, this is a combined presentation between myself, Samuel, Alexi, and Dan. So I'll quickly rush through the 10 minutes that I have got. Um, I'll be talking about uh, the assignment of devices into realms and some of the issues that we have. Right, so a little bit about the CCA. Uh, it's an extension to the existing 1.0 architecture. The support patches are in the list. Um, and the 1.1 update uh, brings in a lot of features, including planes that my colleague uh, Derek talked about earlier, and uh, device assignment along with other features. So I'll talk more about the device assignment aspect. So in this case, the RMM takes the role of the trusted security manager, uh, which means it talks to the device uh, in a, uh, and establishes the SPDM. All of this communication with the device is passed through the non-secure host, Linux KVM, uh, and the me mechanism is using the RHEL management interface, which the host can use to talk to the RMM. All the data passes through shared buffer, and, and you know, uh, secure SPDM guarantees the protection. So, um, and there is an interface between the, ho the guest, the RELM guest, and, and the host to get certain information like cached certificates and measurements that uh, Realm can then verify with the RMM who keeps the digest. So you know, that's how you verify the certificates and stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And, uh, and it, we can also support uh, platform devices uh, where you may not have actually the SPDM certificate as such. They are attested via the pl uh, platform attestation report. There is, a, there is a slide with all of the device assignment flow uh, uploaded into the talks page. So I'm not covering all of that today. Uh, right, and here's the interesting bit here now. Uh, when you have a, a device in the uh, you know, trust T disk run state, it generates the T equal to one transactions. And on RAM CCA, the T bit decides what is the uh, transaction state whether it is non-secure or whether it's in the realm world. So when you have a T-bit one transaction, it comes to the realm world, and all of these transactions has to be translated. If you have, if you're using an IOMMU, it has to be translated uh, on the secure side of the IOMMU. Uh, T equal to zero transactions goes through the non-secure world, which is completely under the control of the Linux host and hypervisor. Uh, the realm side world of the SMMU, it's under the control of the RMM. Now, as you can see, if the device starts using a stage one translation uh, to talk to the, uh, to access the realm memory, it needs to have a stage one translation that needs to be, you know, uh, the realm needs uh, an access to the SMMU so that it can configure the stage one translation that needs to be emulated by the RMM uh, for the realm world translations. Similarly, non-secure can be emulated by the hypervisor. And before we go into the problem, I just wanted to introduce some uh, you know, technical details of how it works today for the realms. So a realm sees its PA space, it's a single space, but technically uh, on ARM-CCA it is split into two different halves. Uh, the lower half is the protected half and the upper half is unprotected. Any access to the unprotected half, if you have a device, say, you know, in MMI or region, in the unprotected, if you have an MMI region, it could be either unprotected or protected, and the guest can detect this, whether this is a, a protected or unprotected and at runtime, talking to the RMM. Any access to the unprotected IPA goes to the hypervisor through the RMM, so RMM can see this, but it doesn't do anything with it. It leaves to the hypervisor to service it. Anything that is in the protected space, it's handled by the RMM, and it can service it, and it's completely protected. The data doesn't leave the realm world. Uh, so with CCA 1.0, we don't have any devices in the realm world emulated by the RMM. But uh, with 1.1, we'll have SMMU instance that you know the realm may need to use for stage one translations. Right. You, you mean you mean uh, private mode devices in, in, emulated in, in the RMM? Private mode. There, there could be private mode devices. For example, a GIC interface could be emulated in in the realm world. It may not be necessarily RMM. It could be one of the privileged planes, like the paravisor earlier we talked about. Right. Uh, so this is how it looks like when you have a, a non-secure device that uh, that access the memory. So uh, the 
RHEL needs to set up stage one translation page tables for the device in the shared pages. And it sees uh, an unprotected SMMU instance, and it, it maps it as such. And then all of these accesses go to the hypervisor. This is all good, but then when you turn this into the TDS run state, uh, suddenly the, the RHEL needs to use a protected SMMU instance, because that's, that's the only thing that the RMM can see. And uh, then RMM needs to kind of configure them. So this is what it should look like when you have uh, uh, the device in the TDS run state. Uh, the SMMU is emulated by RMM, and then any transaction that comes from the hardware, it checks whether it's, uh, you know, if it's in the run state, and if the T is 1, all of them goes through the realm SMMU, physical SMMU. Uh, any T equal to 0 transactions, like MSI accesses, it comes to the non-secure SMMU, and it can go to the hypervisor. In that case, the realm doesn't need to even know that there is a SMMU in the non-secure world, because it's, it, it doesn't have to worry about it. But it's all, you know, the host can manage a stage 2 translation, and it, does, it knows uh, the stage two translation for IPA to PA translation, so it doesn't matter. Now, so when you do this translation from the shared mode to protected mode, what do we do if there was if the realm, uh, you know, is know about it knows about the stage one translations? It suddenly needs to, you know, switch the SMMU that it uses, or should we, you know, how do we solve this problem of having two SMMU instances depending on? Uh, which mode the device is in. So there are some possible solutions. One is, let's say that the SMME is always in the protected space, and uh, the RMM will always emulate it. And it can then pass on the information to the non-secure hypervisor if the device is in the uh, you know, untrusted state. If it's in the shared state, send everything to the uh, VSMMU and, and the hypervisor can emulate it. But this has a problem that, you know, all the uh, realm world accesses are visible to the, I mean, all the SMMU in interactions are visible to the uh, hypervisor, which is not that bad because the device is anyway in the shared state. And this has to be done uh, specific to the device because there could be other devices ma under this uh, protected SMMU. Other option, so you know, you know, and sorry. So just to complete that, when the device turns into the run state, uh, realm RMM can stop sending the information back to the hypervisor. So this, this is fine. But the fundamental principle of you know, you the RMM, the host cannot see the realm accesses is broken. So which is the you know, problem there. The other option is provide two SMMU instances to the, uh, to the guest, and it can be contained in a wrapper driver, and then uh, the wrapper driver can decide, or based on the state of the device, you program the appropriate SMMU so that you, know, you, get, uh, you get accesses going to the non-secure VSMMU, and then everything works. Or the other option is you're kind of breaking one of the other principles where uh, a device is either protected or shared. Here you say that you know you have two in SMU instances. One is protected and one is shared, but they are exactly on the same alias on the other side, which was not the case earlier. So we could use one of that, where you know the the realm has to program both of them, saying that it's controlled by two SMMUs. So any thoughts on the proposal? Yes, please. Do, for the unprotected, do you just want to use Virtio IMMU, maybe? Does this help? Sorry, I, I didn't get you. No. Do, for the unprotected, do you want to use uh, Virtio IMMU, maybe? Does this help? Uh, even... No. Yeah. If you want to actually have the IMMU running, you want to run it in nested mode, and you want all the acceleration. Like you don't want to fall back to Virtio IMMU. So again, the, the problem still remains, right? You have one device and two SMMUs, and it, that's the case. Why don't why not use a emulation SMMU, right? You could. But I feel like the simpler answer is that we don't actually really need translation available if you have it in t equals zero. Is that is that okay? 
Is that okay? That's the, that's the other question, yes. If, if that's acceptable, yeah, we're fine. I mean, it's sort of ugly in the driver to... to yeah, yeah. And second question is, so like if you have two IMMUs, and, uh, then you have to somehow uh, make sure that the correct one is used for the correct device and all this authentication thing has to also verify that in some way. Yeah, so we can verify the uh, SMMU aspects. Uh, the Realm can actually talk to the RMM and make sure that the, at least the protected SMMU is, is what it expects. That's fine, but the problem is, or do we rely on the guests to say, when you transfer this device from shared mode to the protected mode, you do all the work, or the driver do all the work of, you know, copying all of these shared stage one translations over to the uh, protected SMMU instance. One on the bridge. Yeah, you can, you can ask your question, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I may have missed this, but I, I'm wondering what are the use cases for a realm to want to talk to a device in both shared and private modes? No, uh, the, the problem is when... The same the, device. Yeah. It's not going to be in the same... I mean, it's not going to be at the same time, but you may start a device in the shared mode, and you would have programmed some things into the device, like, oh, you, here are my translations, and you can share this. And afterwards, you may say that, no, I'm going to make you trusted now. And then what do we do about the translations that we passed on to the device? Do we? That, that's what I'm struggling to see. Why, yeah. why would you do that? Why would you not just wait until you get the trusted device? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, but, but I, would, I would expect that that would be a violent operation because like the DMA API is not ready for devices mm -hmm. to have. So like when you want to, go from shared to private, it's almost, it's almost a hot plug. You drop everything and come yep. back up in the private world with no shared mappings anymore. Right, okay. So your question, um, some hardware has some interesting design decisions where you, you need to touch the device in the non-secure mode to even get to the secure mode. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I agree with Dan, right? Like changing the way the IOMMU is allowed to work while the driver is bound and changing what you want to do with the DMA API, yeah. it's not reasonable. You might get there, but not. Yeah, so I, I kind of like the idea that, at least on ARM hardware, at least for this generation, if you're in T equals zero and you have a driver bound, then you're in identity mapping mode and you're just yeah. stuck there and you can't yeah. leave and you can't use any advanced features. You don't get passive, you don't get SVA, you don't get any stuff. It's yeah. just like this stupid, very simple IOMMU that's pass-through only. Yep. And when you get yourself into T equals one mode, it stays pass-through only. Mm -hmm. So you don't get any, you know, there's no disruption to the driver. And then somehow you have to unbind and rebind your driver to switch it into fully operating mode with, a, with potentially a non-identity translation, although I suspect that's not the use case. But I don't know. It sounds complicated. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, I hope you guys fix this in a future version and allow the secure yeah. IOMMU to process T equals one no. or T equals, T equals zero, zero with yeah. the secure copies of all the secure page tables because that makes a lot more sense. That's what AMD is doing. I don't know what Intel is doing, but. But I can certainly take the feedback. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah thank you. So there's a question on the chat from Guren, Ren and he asks, uh, or he, she asks, uh, when T equals one, is there any limitation for using ATS? Uh, I don't think so. We have the protected SMMU. As long as we expose the protected SMMU, it, it should all work. But there, there are certain other requirements that like you need, you need to have you know, pages pinned and whatnot. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure if I'm eating into other people's time slots, so please feel free to come in and, you know. It, it's kind of more of a question for general Linux, uh, cross-vendor things. Is, uh, uh, does T equals zero traffic go over IDE? I don't think so. Okay, it depends. Come on out.
we do have devices that will have at the both time TBT GAL 0 and TBT GAL 1 okay. when they are in run mode. Well, you to confirm yes. No, no, no. There you can. No, you can. No, no, no. What? Well, Yeah, yeah. So, so I understand his problem on, on the other side, but I just want yeah. to point out that we so, do have devices right. like that. And, and in both modes, do you would need stage one translations? I mean, do you need stage one translations in the shared mode? Yep. Uh, I, I, Jerome, I have no idea how we'll make that work in Linux, especially with this ARM problem where you have different translations for t equals one and t equals zero. Like it makes sense on something like AMD where yeah, sure you can send whatever you want and it's the same translation, it always works out. But here, like you need to, Linux will need to actively block those kinds of devices from working. I, I don't know how we're gonna do that. I'm, I'm sad that people are doing that. Please don't do that. <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, yeah, that's all I had. As I said, the device, uh, Assignment flow, complete flow is available on the slide on the site.